I can't get into the specifics of it other than just say he's doing well. Um, we had an opportunity to visit with him last night, which was really a, a relief and, and, and kind of uh, cool because he was uh, he was in a really good place. Uh, you know, the doctors were very positive with him, and uh, he was very positive as well. So, uh, you know, we're very fortunate. He's very fortunate. It's a very unfortunate situation, uh, but he's doing well. Uh, you know, and it's just it'll be a matter of time. Jonathan, could you just walk us through your reaction to Brian Robinson and um, what'd you make of it? It's sad. Um, young guy, you never want to see something like that happen. By the grace of God, he's okay. It's not life threatening, and he's going to be okay. So that's really what's the most important thing right now. You're a leader on this team. Have you spoken to the team? Did you speak to them ahead of practice? No, Coach Rivera had a team meeting about it. He talked about the situation. He said he's doing okay. And we move forward. Have you talked to Brian at all? I sent him out a text, but at a time like this, he does. I, I'm not worried about him responding to me. I just want to let him know the team's thinking about him, and you know we're praying for him. It's my job. I mean, people make a big deal about the adversity that the Commanders have been facing, but at the end of the day, we're professional athletes and we get paid to play football, and that's what I'm going to do. And no matter how much adversity we deal with off the field, it's not going to. I'm not going to let it affect me on the field. You talk about being paid to play through distraction, like. But does this situation, is that different than a normal distraction? I mean, there's different levels of distractions. At the end of the day, the biggest thing is that he's safe. He's not dead, and it's not life-threatening. That's all that matters. 
Do you think your teammates are able to adopt that same mindset? And, and kind of how would you describe the vibe of the locker room? hundred percent. You wouldn't be able to play at the NFL if you let distractions get to you. Even though this is a very tragic and sad situation, B. Robert understands, and he will be mad at us if we let it if we let his situation affect us. I know what kind of guy he is. I know how he wants us to go out there and play, and he's fine. He'll be back, and you know we have a job to do. Just how has he settled into this locker room in the first couple of months, and what kind of person is he in your eyes? He fit right in. He's exactly the kind of guy that we want, and that's exactly the kind of guy that we needed. We're, ex we're really excited about him. Yeah, obviously it's heartbreaking, um, but obviously there's positive news uh, as of late and, and how he's doing. But, yeah, caught, caught us all off guard yesterday, obviously, on, a, on an off day, but um, reached out, shot him a text right away, reached out to Coach Rivera right when I heard, and, and Coach kept me up to date on kind of how he was doing, and after he had visited with him and went over there so yeah I, mean, I think it's a it's a wake-up call to everybody just like you know this is there's real life problems out there in this world but um thankfully brian's brian's doing well i'm told and look forward to seeing him it's sobering for sure you know you you definitely you hear those that news and it's like okay this isn't even football anymore you know someone was shot you know and uh this is a real life off the field thing that that someone's going through and again we're we're fortunate uh, with with how he's doing, and again, that's all what I've, what I've been hearing. But um, things could have obviously been a lot worse. But yes, it is very real life. It, it takes you away from football real quick and say uh, these are real life issues that we all that we're all going through, and everybody um, and we're not immune to it. Feel good, feel good. It, it's exciting. Obviously, we've put some some good, some bad, some ugly out on tape, and it's not been perfect. But um, I think I like where we're at. I like the the mindset. I like the makeup. Um, definitely not perfect, and we'll be building and growing as a team really every week, uh, every time we step on the field. But um, the body of work we've had from OTAs, the summer, uh, training camp, and then preseason games, I, I really like where we're at, and I'm optimistic. Uh, it's a new team. Their coach, you know, everybody's new down there, so um, I try not to put too much stock into that. It, it's week one. It's it's at home. There's, there's obviously a lot of emotions everybody will be feeling. Uh, I try and put that all behind me. It's good to hear from Coach Rivera and other people that he's going to be okay and make a quick recovery. And, um, you know, it's very fortunate, but um, I know he's going to take his time to get back. And uh, I'm just glad that he's just uh, healthy and, and alive. You know, life is hard. It really is. And it is, I think, you know, in our position where we're kind of at a higher standard and we play a kid's game but get paid a lot of money, a lot of eyes and attention on us, um, you know, people kind of forget that we are still human sometimes and things do affect us on and off the field. So um, we just try to support each other and be uh, be a unit as much as we can. And um, um, I think we have a great support system from our coaching staff and the other guys in this locker room. Just you got a lot of guys and resources you can lean on. I think that's really important. When we're going through a lot of adversity and, um, you know, just as a leader, I try to put myself in a position to make myself available to help in any way that I can. I think he kind of just gravitated to me a little bit. Um, I don't can't quite tell you why, but I think uh, we sit together in uh, a lot of offensive meetings He's like right next to me. So he asks a lot of questions. And uh, I remember after his first preseason game, I, mean, I was just telling him to continue to compete because he had a chance to really help us this year. And he was like, man, I'm just trying to <laughs> – I'm just helping on special teams and things like that. And that's kind of, it reminded me of myself because you're just humble in the, in the fact that you don't necessarily appreciate appreciate the opportunities you have in front of yourself, like to really help the team. And you're just thinking, oh, you want to help in any way possible. That's kind of his mindset. And he's, uh, like I say, he's very in, excited when he comes out to the field. And, um, you know, he's a guy who comes from Ohio, Alabama and Alabama and Ohio State are a lot of similar programs, so I know he's built with toughness and, and trains the right way and has the right mentality coming onto the football field. But just the little things about taking care of your body, um, understanding it's a long season, you got to maintain um, your physical health, your mental health, and uh, continue to learn. I think if you could stay on um, edge and continue to see how you could get better, then you'll always find yourself improving because you never get complacent. And I think a lot of that stuff he knows, but I hopefully coming from a, you know, a player um, who's been here a little bit and has had a little bit of success, um, I think he gravitates to that. But I think just as a, as a whole, he's a good human being and uh, he's a really good, great competitor. And so um, you know, it's just going to be good to see his face again when he's back. I know you never expect something like this to happen, but mm -hmm. when you go out in public, do you ever worry that something like this could happen, or do yeah. you take extra precaution or something like that? Yeah, honestly, I, I, I was talking to my girlfriend about it last night. You kind of think about it like 
you know, I I pride myself on just being a normal human being. Like when I go out in the in Ashburn or in DC, like if I'm going to go see a concert, I'm seeing it like the other people that are there. And sometimes I guess you forget like your Terry McLaurin or whatever. I don't really see it as that, but other people kind of do. And I don't see myself as a target or anything like that, but it just makes me try to be more aware, you know what I mean? Um, but at the, at the same time, I can't, you know, live in fear and, and walk around thinking something's going to happen. But at the same time, you have to be vigilant. So, um, you know, I don't really go too many places, but when I do, I try to, you know, I don't really post my locations or things like that. I kind of just go about my business, but, um, things are happening all across this, all, all across the world. And it's, and it's unfortunate. You never know what can happen. So you just have to, um, you know, be as precautious as possible and, um, you know, have people around you that they can trust. I, I, I don't really go a lot of places by myself. Yeah, I mean, when you're trying to get a, a football team together to go out here and win games and then you got final cuts, guys, lives are going to be changed in a few hours. It's a lot, you know what I mean? And um, can't imagine what it's like for him being the head coach and then, you know, things like happen off the field with Brian and, um, some other things that have transpired in his personal life. So I respect the way he goes about it. He's never really hung his head low or had like a pity party for himself. Um, you know, he's always say he has broad shoulders and it's easy to say that, but when things start to happen to you, you really get to see the character of a person. And I think, uh, he handles it well. He tries to be as honest as he can in these situations. So the team's informed and I think that helps us to, uh, feel like that we're in the loop as well. When he runs the ball, when he's running through the tackles, when uh, you're not tackling out here, but when he's making thuds against the defenders, like you can feel him running behind his pads. And I think um, when you have that kind of running style, I think that wears on a defense over the course of a game. Um, got a young guy like himself where he could probably take 20 plus carries and uh, he's improved so much as a pass catcher as well. Um, I think, you know, when he gets back fully healthy, the sky's the limit for what he can do and how he can help this team. And, uh, you know, I think he helps AG as well, you know, um, them two being back there with JD, being able to carry the ball and catch out the backfield. Just I think he just adds to another piece of, of weapons that we could have on this offense to be successful this year. And I'm just wondering from from your perspective, because you're one of the guys who've been here for a while now, yeah. everything that you had to face while being here, especially this year, you mm -hmm. have the Haskins situation and now yeah. this. Like, how would you describe your emotions as they mm -hmm. continue to go up and down here? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, uh, I've really benefited from, um, you know, s seeing a therapist and, and talking with with him. And it's allowed me to have an outlet, um, you know, my family, my girlfriend, my, my teammates. I've really learned to lean into my support more. I think a lot of times just people in general, it doesn't have to be athletes. Um, you feel like you're alone, but I think... Also, it helps to learn that you do have the support and you just sometimes have to, op have to open yourself up to receive that support and to receive that love and that care that you need because um, the more you harbor it in, the more you hold it in, um, it just festers up inside and it you blow up or you react in ways that are not necessarily indicative of who you are as a person or your character. And you want to try to minimize that as much as possible. But I think just understanding how empathetic we all have to be as human beings to everybody's going through something. And if you can help them in any way, I think uh, showing that grace, showing that empathy is extremely important because a lot of people out here really put on a brave face and they're battling the real life stuff inside. And um, just having that awareness as a human being, it's helped me continue to um, grow and um, lean into the people that I have. And I think it makes the load a lot lighter when you don't feel like you're carrying it alone. You have an outlet to where you can um, see yourself growing as a human being and healing from some of the things you've been through.